to another video with Arduino. Today we're going to take a deeper look or a dive into what the buzzer is and how we can use it to implement it into our projects. So we're probably going to use previous gadgets like the motion sensor or LED lights and stay tuned for a special Christmas project. All right, so let's get started with the buzzer. If you notice something about the buzzer, it looks like this. And if you notice something, just like the LED lights, there's a positive and a negative side. The shorter side is the negative side and the longer side is the positive side, just like the LED. So now let's focus back. Let's start off with our first wire and we're gonna connect this to the ground GND. This should be all relatively familiar. It's quite similar to the LED. So we're gonna take GND, put this over here, and remember, take our buzzer, and remember the short side and the longer side. So the short side is going to be in alignment with the first wire. So right here, this is the first the shorter side, but also make sure you notice that the longer side or the positive side, which line it's going to be in. So it's going to be, if we're connecting a wire with this, it's going to be in alignment with this row. Just put it right here. So now we know that it is over here. Connect this, this using a resistor. And then we're going to in alignment with the end of the resistor. We're going to connect this with, let's just say two for now. So take a good look at everything. And I'll also put a wiring diagram on the screen so that you can look at it better. All right, so this is what my circuit looks like. I'm also gonna put an online diagram so that you can see it better. Just notice where the alignment is. Notice that the short side or the negative side is in alignment with the wire and the positive side or the longer side is in alignment with the resistor. So let me just take it out and put it again here. And then we're going to put it back right there. All right. So now let's go online to the code and maybe the online wiring diagram. All right, so let's take a look at the code and an actual visual representation of the Arduino. So this is a really great site that I recommend. Um, I guess it's pronounced Wokwi. And so here it's a real... Um, demonstration of what an Arduino looks like and the gadgets you can use with it. So we can go here and plus, and you see the buzzer, the servo. Um, you also see the LEDs, the analog joystick, which is all things we're going to get into in future videos. But for now, we're just going to be using the buzzer as our gadget. So remember, this is going to be the negative side or the shorter side, which we will connect to the ground. And then the more positive side or the longer side will be connected to a resistor. And then that resistor connects to the two pin. That's very important because if you looked at um, when we were putting everything together, we connected the buzzer to num the second pin on the Arduino. So we see here int buzzer equals two, just like the LED and also um, tone buzzer 200. So this is kind of like LED high and LED low. So tone buzzer 200 allows the buzzer to um, sound or beep and 200 um, just indicates how like how high the frequency is. So if you put it at a higher number, that's going to be at a higher tone. And if you do it lower, um, it's going to be at a lower tone. So the delay is also, it waits one second. No tone is like saying um, the LED low. So the buzzer to 400 and then buzzer like to not sound. So we're gonna um, sound the buzzer. So it's gonna beep, wait one second, buzz, and then wait one second. So if we play this simulation, it might be pretty loud, just a heads up. 
and you see how the buzzer sounds, stops, and then sounds again. So this is just a really cool demonstration of it. Um, you should put it into your Arduino like this, um, upload it, and see what happens. So we're going to use this um, in conjunction with the motion sensor. So let's get into that. All right, so this is what my buzzer sounds like after I set the tone to 400. This is kind of what the wiring diagram looks like. And now um, I already implemented the motion sensor, but I suggest that you try it on your own and then we'll go over it. If needed, you can refer back to the previous video, but um, after you've tried it yourself, we're going to look at the motion sensor and um, look at the online diagram once again. I'm gonna give you a second. So here's what mine looks like. I implemented the motion sensor. Take a look at the wires. Here are my connections. All right, so let's look at the visual diagram and then possibly implement something with this setup. All right, so here's what the diagram looks like, this visual representation. So we have the buzzer from before connected to ground and pin two. Um, if we want to add this, we just come here, add ultrasonic distance sensor, and we put this inside. Um, this is relatively similar to what we went over last video. So we have the ground connected to the ground, the VCC connected to the 5V. And if you were wondering where the trig and the echo came from here, these pins, well, now you see them. This is trig and this is echo. Trig is connected to 12 and echo is connected to 13. So this is the wiring diagram. Um, feel free to copy it. Okay, so now let's get into the actual code. So const echo and trig, these initialization statements are something that we saw last video as well. The duration and distance. Um, if you need a refresher on that, you can always go to the previous video where we where we were experimenting with the motion sensor and LED lights. And if you come over here, this is the trig and echo output, the 9600. This allows serial communication. And the digital right, trig high, and delay 1000, the trig low. Um, it allows these to accept input or, or turn on. So this is um, high and low. This is waiting one second. And these are all basically the same thing we saw last video. So the duration, um, we're using calculations to calculate the distance, and we're going to print the distance to the serial monitor. But then you see here, this is where we added our buzzer. And soon we're going to use this code in order to um, allow the buzzer to beep if a certain proximity is reached. So you see here, this is where we set it up before. So let me put this into my Arduino. So this is kind of what it looks like. I'll link it down in the description um, after we use if statements to determine um, like kind of similar to the LED lights, but instead of the red LED shining, we're going to sound the buzzer. So this is kind of what it looks like. And it's very familiar to the last video where we were talking about um, the motion sensor. But in this one, now we're using input and information from the buzzer in order to um, develop a different output. So now let's get into that. I try. I urge you to do it yourself um, using if statements. You can come over here and if you see distance, right, kind of similar to the LED video, we can just say if distance is less than blah, 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 then tone buzzer 400, right? You can just do it that way or um, some other algorithm that you choose. But uh, I'm going to leave you off here and we're going to come back when you've got the answer. All right, so I've gotten my buzzer to work. So what happens is if I put my hand really close, it buzzes, and then if I put my hand away, it doesn't buzz anymore. So I used the unit of 20. You can experiment with it, and I'll show the code in a few seconds. All right, so now let's look at this code and implementing the motion sensor. So the way this works is it's relatively similar, but I implemented if and else statements. So now let's for a second take off this else statement. 
So if we go through here, what's happening is it's going through the whole process and then it's finding the distance. So from the distance, let's just say um, my hand is 40 units in front of it, right? The if statement evaluates the false, so nothing happens. So that's correct. The buzzer will not sound if the distance is greater than 20. However, let's go through this again. Let's say the distance is 10. So if distance is less than 20, it is. So let's make the buzzer sound. Okay, this seems correct. So what's wrong with this? Well, if we go through again, let's say the distance is 40 now, okay? And from now, since before the distance was 10, the buzzer is still buzzing right now. However, let's go through again with distance of 40. Distance is not is greater than 20 because 40 is greater than 20. So this thing does not evaluate. So it just skips this whole part. But the buzzer is still sounding even though distance is greater than 20. So what? how do we fix this? Well, if we use else statements, it allows the buzzer to stop buzzing and kind of reset so that it so that the code works properly. So if distance is less than 20, okay, it is, then this will happen. However, if distance is less than 40, the buzzer is still buzzing right now. Distance is not less than 20. So the buzzer stops buzzing because the distance is not less than 20. So it essentially allows the buzzer to kind of reinitialize and reevaluate each time instead of going through one time and staying in that state forever. So it evaluates distance every single time to be less than 20 or greater than 20, and it will respond accordingly. This is a huge part in programming in any language and not just for Arduino, going through the code and actually understanding it and understanding the logic. So now let's implement this into our program. Oops. Let's just use, oh yeah, something I also wanted to remind you guys is that there's a serial plotter, which is also helpful. And it shows, you can hear my buzzer in the background, and it documents it for you. So kind of similar to the serial monitor. But this is um, just a sneak peek. Um, what you can do if you want to try it, and we'll, tr and we'll look over it in the next one, is... If the distance, let's say if the distance is um, greater than 20, but less than 40, we want the buzzer to be at an even higher frequency. So it's more high pitched. So try that on your own. We're going to try that um, in the next clip. And then we're going to do our Christmas surprise. Okay, so now we implement the new else if statement. Um, just a refresher, an else if statement works so that um, if this is true, then this statement executes and it skips this whole part. However, an if statement, a regular if statement would work like, so if this is true, then it will test this case. Whereas an else if statement works, if this is true, then it skips this. So this is what I was um, talking about. If the distance is less than 20, we want the buzzer to... Um, sound at 200, but if the distance is greater than 20, but less than 40, we want it to buzz, but at a higher volume or a higher frequency. So that's kind of what I was talking about. Um, you can make it so that like maybe you can make this 30 and then maybe make a range of 40 and 50 and make the frequency even higher. That would be really cool too. Um, but if it's greater than the range, then nothing is, there's no sound. So that's basically um, how this works. Um, it goes through a process of determining if the distance, it goes through a series of like conditionals and determines output based on that. So um, I hope you got that one right. And so now let's move on to um, implementing a Christmas song. All right, so here's the little uh, Christmas surprise, I guess. Um, so for this, it's really, really cool with the buzzer. So this is also an introduction to buttons, which we will also go over probably in the next video. But and then if you press the second button.
and then the third button. And so I'm going to share this code. It's pretty lengthy. And I'm going to go over um, kind of some small things for how the logic works. So let's get into it. All right, so this is the code. I'll paste this in the description just because it's a little bit more lengthy. Um, this is like the tempo. These are called uh, arrays as shown by the brackets, the two brackets here. Um, these are more of like the tempo, the notes, um, kind of more of the melody and the actual song. So I'm not going to get more into that, but here I'm going to get more into the logic. So these are called switch one, switch two, and switch three. Um, these are represented by the buttons that you press. Um, you can come over here. This is the pin mode. So nine output, um, you see in this comment over here this is the buzzer and you, you saw that um the buzzer was connected to pin 9 on the arduino that same goes for the buttons which were connected to 2 3 and 4 and you can tell from here that these are all input because it makes sense right you click the button that's the input and the output is the buzzer or the song so once we put the input and we get an output or the song what we want to do is go into this loop and so this loop says it wants switch one to read pin two, switch two to read pin three, and switch three to read pin four. So it wants to receive or understand what is going on with those pins. And you can see here, if switch one equals high. So if the first switch is pressed or if the first button is pressed, we want to refer to sing one. And that is a function. We're going to go over that as we scroll down. So what's happening is it's just checking is switch one or is the first button pressed is the second button pressed or is the third button pressed and that's how it gets it by doing digital read and then it will correspond to the correct song so now this is what i was talking about um these are called functions and so what it does is it takes a parameter so int s so that means you see here three essentially what happens is when you call sing right and put in a parameter or a number s gets assigned to three and so that's the same thing here right sing three so if s becomes three which is what you see here in the if statement so if you call the function and the parameter is three three becomes s so s equals three and then you see here s equals song so song equals three does song equal three and it says, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And then it goes through all of the melodies and the um, process of um, singing the song. And then you come here, is song equals to two? Well, if you come over here, sing, and then with parameter two, S becomes two, song becomes two, and so song is now two. So is song two? Yes. And then we go through all of this. And then else... Um, you can assume if it's not three, two, it has to be one. So then this area or this, these lines of code uh, prints out. And so this is basically how the code works. It checks if um, the first button is pressed, the second button is pressed, or the third button is pressed, and will call the function to play the song accordingly. All right, so this is what the wiring set up through some of the images that I took of the breadboard. And here is what the wiring and setup looks like on the website. It's a little bit more clear for you to see visually. All right, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I tried to do something fun this time um, with the Christmas project. I, th I thought that was pretty cool with like using the buzzer and everything, but um, I really hope you learned something about the buttons. Uh, we're probably going to go over that in the next video as well, but um, for now, just learning about the buzzers, the motion sensor, and just learning more about the Arduino and codec. So I really hope you learned something, you really enjoyed the video. Um, leave a like and subscribe and turn on those notifications to not miss another Arduino video since I do weekly uploads.